with all of the excitement over the Wednesday Night Wars. <laughs> The Wednesday Night Wars. I'm sorry, I can't contain myself. I got myself kind of caught up in things, and I'm like, hey, I might as well partake in it too. This is going to be a crazy awesome time in professional wrestling. And I decided I was going to watch NXT this week, which I actually did last week. I just didn't do a video about it. So I'm here to tell you that at least for the time being, as long as I <laughs> seem to be interested in doing it, I'm going to be watching NXT every week and probably reviewing the show every week. Now, in terms of the format of the review, uh, as we go along, I'll probably try and do some things a little bit differently as opposed to the Raw review to try and make it feel like its own separate entity, kind of like you used to see with... Back in the day, the Raw reviews with the group was one thing, and then when I would do like the Impact reviews, they would be entirely different and have their own feel to them. Uh, I'll try and figure it out as we go along. won't do much different this week. It's just going to be one straight shot, but just to kind of let you know. Um, now, I will say in terms of NXT is that it's so much easier to watch it in part because it is only an hour. That helps, and there's no doubt. After sitting through three hours of Raw, on a Monday night or the next morning, uh, it's nice to only have to sit there and commit one hour to watching NXT. So it means it's something that I can watch live on Wednesday night, you know, so to speak, when it airs, or I can sit there and go back and watch it another time, early in the morning, afternoon, later, late at night, whatever the case might be, and it's not taking up much of my day. I like that, and I appreciate that very much, and I hope NXT stays an hour, at least for the time being. Maybe at some point in time I would like to see them go to 90 minutes. I don't want them to go to two hours. I don't think they need to go two hours, nor do I think they have enough to be able to go two hours. I would maybe like to see them go 90 minutes, just because it will allow a couple of more things to happen, a few more people to be featured, give you a little bit more time to develop better stories. Because as I'm sitting here watching NXT, uh, you know, that was one thing that stood out to me was that there was some attempt at storytelling, but not a lot, if you will. But let's start off first with the things that I did like about this week's show. Number one, again, as I emphasize the fact that it's only an hour, I'll keep coming back to that, but it is refreshing when it's not three hours that you have to sit through all the time. What I do like, too, is that some of the things that they did have on the show, they at least attempted to develop some type of purpose. They at least tried to give you some type of reason. Like, you know, the thing with Carmella and Alexa Bliss goes back to the last show, Unstoppable. Here it is. You're giving these two girls time. You're giving us a match that actually has some reason, some consequence, some purpose for happening. And I like that, and I appreciate that. When you look at what the main roster does with their divas, you see what NXT does with their women. It's, it's much easier to get behind the women. It's much easier to enjoy watching the women because you actually feel like they have consequence, they have meaning, they have purpose, that they freaking matter. And then you see the character profiles of like a Sasha Banks and you know this is a, a good job of trying to reintroduce people to a character or in some cases introduce people to a character or try to add layers or depth to a character and in particular feature your NXT women's champion like she's a big deal find a way to get her on the show without having to overexpose her by having a wrestle all the time or always having to do the same old thing so this is something I would like to see incorporated a little bit more on the main roster and I thought they did a good job with this here and the way they packaged it and the way they presented it made you feel like Sasha Banks is a main event type of attraction for an NXT brand which means they may very well be getting prepared for it some point in time down the road having her main event and NXT special event which she deserves and frankly those women in NXT deserve and I hope that they do and then I look at the interview that they had with Finn Balor it, it, it felt a little weird but that wasn't necessarily a bad thing but he's sitting there and he managed to manages to interweave a couple of different things talking about himself and who he is but talking about that big match that he has July 4th in Japan and the NXT special against Kevin Owens for the NXT title. You know, also mentioning the fact that he's talking about his match on the show against Rhino. So he's incorporating a couple of different things. I like the little pre press conference thing they did with William Regal as well, announcing that July 4th show in Japan. It looks like it could be an interesting night. 
And frankly, I wish this is where they would have the next match between John Cena and Kevin Owens instead of doing it at Money in the Bank. Get more people to watch NXT. Maybe that's not what Vince wants to do because they'll sit there and look at NXT and be like, eh, it's only an hour or two hours for the special events. And I like it better. <laughs> you know, so I like the presentation of it to some degree. Like even you sit there and you've got the VOD villains returning. And then you have on the flip side, you're not only establishing them, but you've got Jason, was it Jason Jordan? And they're trying to give some type of story there where he's looking for a tag team partner. And you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, the guy's losing, but they're still bothering to try and tell some type of story with this character while you're trying to reestablish this. This is good, solid stuff. There was some good stuff on the show. Now I'll get to the stuff that I don't particularly like. Um, you know, they had Eva Marie come out for that interview. Oh, God. I understand she might not be the favorites of the NXT fans, but did you have to give her that hard of a time? I mean, is she really, truly that brutally bad? I mean, is she really? Did you need to get that animated about it? <laughs> Holy shit. You know, I hope the WWE does something with her on the NXT brand. I have shit at this point in time. I'd fucking send her at Sasha Banks because that heat she was getting was legit. That heat that she was getting was the beyond that X Pac get the fuck out of here heat. That was that we fucking hate you die heat. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I put that bell on her to tell NXT people to go fuck themselves. <laughs> But they just sat there, and I guess as it went along, you could see she, she was thrown off. She was discombobulated. She, did, she didn't know how to handle it. You know, it, it's just an example of sometimes they bring in these people that don't really have talent, and they hope that they can find something. And sometimes these people can learn, you know, but sometimes they just can't. <laughs> Eva Marie might start to be that example of somebody who just never figures it out and never is able to do anything, honestly. Um, the other big thing, like, you have Tyler Breeze versus Adam Rose, and it was a good opening match, and that's all fine. It was just kind of random, but it is what it is, I guess. I still, when I look at Tyler Breeze, I see a, I see a gimmick and I see a character that works well at NXT, but I really don't think will translate to the main roster at all. And I, I just don't see where it becomes anything other than a job or gimmick. I really don't. And I don't see where Vince and his crew of cronies are going to get behind that at all. So my concern is for a guy like Tyler Breeze, who has made this character work, that has improved and gotten a lot better, honestly, is, is that really the best way for him to get to the main dance? And if not... Is it maybe time to think about shaking up the character or completely changing the character? Uh, the last thing I'll say that I really didn't like is is not so much the match between Finn Balor and Rhino. Um, it's just that when I look at Finn Balor, I'm sorry. I don't see it. I don't get, once you get past the entrance, there's nothing there. And I understand some of you go back with this guy to Japan, and maybe, to be fair, since I'm not a Japan guy and I don't watch Japan shit, maybe he was better in Japan, maybe he worked with better people in Japan, maybe he was able to get more out of himself and others, and they were able to get more out of him in Japan. I don't really know. But I'm sitting there and watching him go against Rhino, and now Rhino's not going to put on a classic masterpiece. I grant you that, and I understand that. And, you know, Finn Balor is going to be somewhat restricted and limited in what he could do with a guy like a Rhino. However, a guy like a Rhino does serve a purpose, and I agree with guys like him being on that NXT brand because, in part, they're there to teach guys. They're there to help guys get better because they've been to that dance, and a guy like Finn Balor has it. But once the entrance happens, that's it. I'm sorry. There's just nothing there. And I don't see why so many people, including apparently people in the WWE, are so high on this guy. He's not ready. Because once the match happens, there's not much sizzle there. I don't think he tells, tells a particularly good story. Um, I don't think his offensive move set, if you will, is all that spectacular. You know, the entrance is great. That'll translate to any wrestling company at any time. That's just phenomenal. It'll instantly get him to that main roster 
and be one of the most memorable things of the night. But what happens after that? And that's my concern as you start to get ready for the thought of maybe Finn Balor winning that NXT title and talking about at some point in time getting him up to the main roster before 2015 is over. I think, frankly, people need to pump the brakes on this. Because as I'm sitting there watching him against Rhino, and again, maybe it's part because it's Rhino too, but I was just kind of bored. And I said, what's the big deal about this guy? It's the same thing I was saying about him in that match at Unstoppable against Tyler Breeze. What's the big deal with this guy? I just don't see the appeal. I do like how they had it finished where, you know, even though Rhino lost, he made sure he got one over on Finn Balor by taking him out. So you're giving a little bit of a reason for a story there. Maybe some type of holdover thing with Kevin Owens doing his stuff with John Cena on the main roster. Um, but I guess it would have been nice to see Owens there this week. That would have maybe helped. Um, but again, that's, that's my big thing is that I, I just, I don't know. I, I, you guys are really going to have to help me understand what the big fuss and big deal and big hullabaloo is about Finn Balor. Because once you get past the entrance, there's just nothing there. For those of you that watched NXT this week, let me know what you thought of the show, what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you're looking forward to most about that 4th of July show in Tokyo. And if you think it's a good idea and if it's going to be a big success for the company and the brand.